In this lesson, we are going to be solving quadratic equations by graphing. In the previous lesson, we looked at how to graph quadratic functions and all the different parts of a quadratic function. But in this lesson, we are going to be solving a quadratic equation. And you'll see the, how, the, how the two are related. Uh, first of all, we need to define a few words. Uh, <clears throat> one of those words is a zero or a root of a function. So they're synonymous. A zero or a root of a function is a value of the input, which is typically x, that makes the value of the output, which is typically y, equal to zero. So if I asked you what's a zero or a root of a particular function, you would give me a value of x that makes the output value y equal to zero. Or if you look at the graph below, if we look at this graph, uh, technically what this would be is here is a value of x right here which is 3, that makes the value of y equal to 0. Right? So when x is 3, y is 0, that's that point. And another 0 or root of this function would be this point here. When the input is negative 1, the output is 0. So in other words, <clears throat> if you look up in your notes here, it says, in other words, generally what we're doing is looking for the x intercepts if you ask for the zeros or roots. Uh, so here is the problem number one. It says given the graph of the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. So that's this graph here, which we looked at how to graph in the previous section in standard form. Determine the roots and check your solution. So the roots, quite straightforward actually, are the two that are indicated. The roots are when, when x is 3, y is 0, and when x is negative 1, y is 0. Those are considered your roots. Uh, so the roots here would be x is equal to 3, and also x is equal to 1. In this case, we are also act, asked to check our solution. Now what checking means is I'm going to substitute this input x, 3, uh, for x, and to see if I get an output of 0. So in other words, I'm going to check to see that y, which I'm just replacing f of x with, <clears throat> is equal to 0 when x is 3. So uh, y is equal to 3 squared minus 2 times 3. I'm just rewriting the function with the number 3 instead of x. Uh, so y is equal to 9 minus 6 minus 3. And what you'll see is y is equal to 0. So that works out. When I substitute negative or 3 into the function, I get an output of 0. So now I'm going to check if when I substitute negative 1 into the function, I get 0 as well. Okay. Uh, so just evaluate. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. And this does equal 0. So in both cases, the input value of x gives us an output of 0. Now what you're going to need in this next part, and you may want to pause the video if you have to, uh, <clears throat> is a graphing calculator. You may want to get one from me, or if you're at home, you can look at uh, some graphing calculator technology on the internet. Uh, we're going to look at a few problems here. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, this first question says, using technology, so a graphing calculator, determine the zeros of the quadratic function in standard form. So we're given the quadratic function. The zeros again means give me the values of x that makes the values of y equal to zero. So if we graph this function, which we've looked at in previous lessons, so I'm just going to graph it quickly. Uh, 3x squared uh, plus 8x plus 7. And I'm just going to hit graph. All right. So in this case, the function looks something like this. Okay. If you look at it, again, the question is saying determine the zeros or determine values of x that make the value of y equal to zero or determine the x-intercepts. Those all mean the same thing. Does this graph ever cross the x-axis? Is y ever equal to zero? And the answer to that is no. So in this case, we have no solutions. There are no values of x that will make the value of y equal to zero. Uh, let's jump into the next one. And again, you may want to pause this video at some point in time and try it yourself. That would be always better. So the next one says, using technology, solve the equation negative 0.5x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. So a little bit of a different question, but really what it's asking for you is what values of x make this function equal 0. So even though uh, it's not saying determine the zeros, it says equal 0. So I want to know the values of x 
that make this function equal 0, or in other words, the values of x that make y equal to 0. So it's exactly actually the same question, just stated in a different way. So again, you may want to pause this video and try graphing this yourself and answering the question yourself. So if I hit graph, you can see here that there are two values of x right here and right here that make the value of the function equal to 0. Let's go ahead and graph it quickly, just to kind of show you what it looks like. So we are looking for these two points. Okay. Uh, if you look at your previous lesson, and now you're kind of getting an explanation as to why these are called zeros. So if you go into and press second trace, we want to calculate a zero. And I'm going to calculate the zero to the left first. So I'm going to make, go to the left of that point. You can look in previous lessons in 7.1 and 7.2 for how to calculate these zeros using a graphing calculator. Uh, but here we go. So one value of x is negative 5.74. Okay. So negative 5.74 gives us a zero. So it's one coordinate. It's this coordinate here. And let's go ahead and find this coordinate here. <clears throat> so second trace zero and I will calculate that. All right, and there we go. Our other zero is 1.74 and zero. So those are our two values of x that give us an output or a value of y of zero. Uh, if you're in my class, what you're going to want to do is show, that, show me that you know what you're doing. Uh, try this question in your study guide. Get me to initial it, and then you can move on into the 7.3 study guide problem 4, which has a YouTube lesson, or you will watch it in class.